mean, it's a golf course where there's opportunity and there's a lot of trouble. You know, it's going to be tough to close out on the back nine. There's a lot of water you know, coming down the stretch. And so, you know, try to get off to a good start. And uh, Hideki's obviously playing some fantastic golf, but um, do my best to put a little bit of pressure on him and uh, see what happens. You think you feel like you have to tighten up, clean up ahead of tomorrow? I mean, just get the ball like a little bit closer to the hole and uh, just hit, give myself more opportunities. Today, I felt like, I felt like, I, like I said, I got away with some stuff. So hopefully, clean that up a little bit and uh, give myself a lot more opportunities tomorrow. Paris, you talked about seeing the leaderboard at the turn on Sunday and how far back you were. And then, did you change anything to shoot 29 or just some putts dropped? Like, did you play more aggressively because of how far back you were? I mean, at times, I would be slightly more aggressive. Like, I think uh, the approach shots I hit into 15 and 16 um, in Paris were definitely more of shots that I would attempt when I'm pressing to catch the lead. You know, if you saw me leading by two, three shots, you probably would see the ball land past the pin on 15, a little left of the pin on 16. Um, but yeah, it changed the strategy a little bit. And going into tomorrow, you know, I'll do what I can to put some pressure on Hideki. But if he goes out tomorrow and shoots another five, six under, he's going to be a pretty tough guy to catch. But, um, you know, I'm definitely not totally out of the tournament. Scotty, for you personally, what's the most challenging part about this golf course? Um, I mean, I think uh, staying committed to your shots, I think there's a lot of trouble out there on the golf course. And, um, you know, there's a few holes where you can lose two shots really quick, which on a golf course where the scoring is fairly low, it can be uh, it can be really tough to, to shoot a low score when you're hitting balls in the water. And so, you know, it's being committed, staying aggressive, while also, you know, striking the balance between staying aggressive and being patient out there and uh, being committed to your shots. Type of day where Scotty Scheffler was just a tick off, but he has an uncanny ability where even on days where he has maybe his C game, whatever you want to call it, he's still somehow signs for a 69. It never seems to creep to like a 72, 73. Why is that the case? Well, it's because he doesn't make many bogeys, but when he does, he is the best in the game at bouncing back from him, making a birdie or better on the following hole. And I was digging into some stats uh, for the Masters. And going into the Masters, he was bouncing back at 44%, which is just a mind-boggling number. And it's a stat he's progressively gotten better and better each year he plays. And if we look, he started out today, bogeys the second hole, gets to third. Bounces Scotty back with the birdie, starting his round. Here he is on two in that left bunker. That is a shot you just never see. If I hit a shot like that, it would derail me, and I would probably go on to make about three or four bogeys in a row, but he doesn't do that. Here he is on the bunker, the green side on the third. And as he's done all week long in these greenside bunkers, he is just making it look so easy, darn near holding this thing. So this was a theme over the course of his round. Here he is on six, putting four. This is where the frustration is. That's the par putt on seven. And this is the kind of frustration we're not used to seeing out of Scotty Scheffler. I mean, he started talking to himself quite a bit this week. And then on eight, he missed a short one. It's not technically a bounce back after that bogey, but he does this on nine. Goes ahead and just stuffs it right in the hole. That was great. So taking a look at his bounce back percentage over the past four seasons, he said he was 44 earlier in the year. It's dropped to one third of the time, exactly 33.33. He's the leader. Last year he was second. And this is right where he's right where he's been all year long. I mean, if you look at his stats today, he's bouncing back this week just under 30% of the time. And it's one of these, it's one of these categories players love to look at. You take a lot of pride in this because it shows that you can get over things quickly. See what Scotty Scheffler's now working on on the range. Day, you probably want to hit a few balls after. You're Scotty Scheffler, sharpen up for Sunday. Yeah, I mean, he made three bogeys on the golf course today, so he's got to be livid with himself. Uh, and he said the last couple of days, all he needs to do is just try to hit the ball a little bit closer. But this is nothing new from him. A lot of guys on a day like today, it's, it's warm outside, don't really feel like going to hit balls. Even at the Masters this year, I was so impressed by. Every round he completed, he's doing interviews, but he goes out to the range. I think they had even have, they had to turn lights on for him one night so he can just sort of cool down, make sure everything's fine. You go into tomorrow, and, and you should have a game plan and have it pretty figured out. How would you rate his week overall so far to this point? It, just big picture. He's T4, 10 under par. Oh, I mean, it's a terrible week for Scotty George. No, he <laughs> he's, he's, it just continues to impress with 
no matter how his game can look, it looked sloppy at times today, and he's sitting there in the second to last group going out tomorrow in, in fourth place. He's going to just miss his friend Sam Burns again unless they go threesomes. But uh, yeah, it's, it's remarkable what he's doing this year. The consistency, the work ethic, I'm, I'm blown away. I wish I, like, my son's a competitive golfer, and I, I really want him to just look at the way Scotty Scheffler does it, and that's how you're supposed to do it in every facet.